and uh, for the actual build on a specific site. And I think it's going to be a bear, you know. And I just want to make sure that I'm not. I have a realistic like. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm like realistic with you about what I can contribute in, in that time frame and what you think we can accomplish and not everything else. Yeah, let's take a look at this. So go to the critical path and let's examine what we've got there and why why we're even dreaming about, so click edit on it, or you can, uh, <clears throat> if you let me share my screen. Yeah. Here is a June 21 critical path, meaning it's rather recent. So, BAM, build at October is determined by some prerequisites. And those are, so let's work backwards from when, when, I mean, we're at like, you know, close to July 1, build finish time. Now build <clears throat> depends on certain deliverables before it, namely, so foundation, like the reality of a foundation is we wanna have it in two weeks at a time. Don't take any risks, make sure it's there. So when everybody shows up, uh, right here. Um, we can't share you your screen. screen. Yeah. Oh, I'm not sharing? No. Because oh, I was on the Google Hangout with <laughs> nobody else there. <laughs> okay. Uh, can you see now? Yeah. Okay. So, so foundation, foundation is two weeks ahead of time, and before that is uh, if it's uh, uh, KC. What do we say? Four four weeks, and then two weeks engineering. If it's KC, um, after we get a permit, you gotta get materials. Uh, permit follows what what the the complete submission of plans like the engineering, which takes two weeks if we submit our stuff to engineering, which is here it's uh, deadline for that is July 15, which I think we can do. Um, so then the earliest we can act actually build be after a permit, which would be like September, but we need a foundation in place and stuff like that. So probably leave a month, uh, 30 day buffer time. Um, now that that doesn't that also would require land, which has not been acquired or discussed. So the land would have to happen anytime like right now with a cutoff of like August the 1st, basically by the time when we submit for engineering, we have to have that on a real lot. It's not just plans you submit, you, you submit plans on a specific lot. Uh, that's the way it works. So the lot would have to be closed on by August the 1st. So that's kind of where we're at. Um, but the build, I mean, realistically speaking, oh yeah, so vacation is actually, I'm already like booked up for a vacation, September 25 through the October the 3rd. So I thought, oh, okay, let's do it right, right after that. Um, so that's that's reality. Like, like this is realistic in terms of if we get the foundation port in place, like there's a month to get that all in place, no problem. Like if there's good weather, that could happen in a few days, right? If there's bad weather and stuff to fix because that has to be approved by also by uh the codes if there's any issues on the foundation there's rework you know we're leaving that month 30 day time so that we're ready and when we're out there to go and build oh yeah build one and two holy cow is that crazy um though that that may that's a big big thing like it should probably be something like this or something like this but we wanted to do uh, I want to. I'm trying to go for four builds, man. If we get through the first one, I think we're we're good. I mean, realistically speaking, like it's not a great idea to make two mistakes. If we're if we're making mistakes, if if some there is some mistake that happens, like um, the idea for the first build was also to learn and make some corrections. But um, and we can make minor corrections, uh, like. So anyway, those is, I'm trying to outline some of the constraints. We can do this here, which is build one, build two. We're saying, okay, we froze everything. The, the model is so complete. We've got three months to document. We've got build finished by July 15. Um, 
uh, Iris and Jim Bates, Iris star Jim Bates have confirmed for coming here July 11. Uh, Brian, you should come out here for a day or two if you can. July 11th through the 15th. What's happening? Finishing of the house. Here, here's this thing is happening. Um, a week of uh, interior finishing. So. Okay. That's that's the thing. It's happening there. John, John Miller, question. Um, yeah, it, it, I wouldn't I wouldn't count on it just the way things are going right now. Yeah. But um, you know, I don't want to say no. Um, I don't want to you wrote, give, give you wrote right June, now. not July. Oh, sorry. Jewel. July. 11-15. I mean, just, just, so, just so we're on the same page, like, to fly me out there would be something like 600 bucks, 500 bucks, uh, this close. Yeah. Um, and, you know... It, that's like assuming that I can get the logistics on my end figured out. Like I'm, I'm gonna have to like rearrange stuff and, and do childcare, and, and like it's, it's a mess. So like I can't commit, but I yeah. want to come. I'm trying my best. That's all. Yeah. That's yeah. all I'm saying. Like, when would you like have a firm um, negative or positive? Next, next week, unfortunately, because it's contingent on my mother-in-law's work schedule. Right, and next week means what? So are you talking between Monday and Friday, or? Monday. Uh, wait, what's it? The uh, twenty six. Yeah, so like, like Monday, Tuesday, probably. Are you talking 27, 28, or the 4th and 5th? No, 4th, 5th. 4th or 5th, I see. Yeah. So next week. Uh, not this week. Um, Sorry. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm like already in. And yeah. Martian, yeah, that's on these build, yeah. builds, uh, the one that might happen in October and the one in July, what are the hours? Well, the July it one sounds is finishing, like you're... finishing this one, right? So we're, we've got just the, you know, the last mile on this one. So exterior, not everything else. The bulk is done. It's like, but it, so what are the hours? We're gonna go like like nine to five every day, or so. I mean, basically as much as we can get, we can stand to be out there. I mean, also not, right. not being too crazy. Um, well, well, roughly, uh, can you describe the the scope of work for the? 11 to 15th. Yeah, the scope of work for 11 to 15 means building out exactly what we have in uh, in the master files. So, so we've got this design, which is actually like well, pretty well documented. I mean, well documented, as in there's a big. This thing is pretty complete and thorough. Like this is exactly what we're going to build. Like this. So is plumbing. Our, yeah, plumbing. That's okay. One. Got it. But given that this is digital design. I don't expect this to take more than a day. It's called taking a bunch of pipes, cutting it. This is all designed already. There's no figuring out in theory. And in practice, uh, that's what we're verifying this time. We're going to also build this out, water supply. This is actually all technically correct and in correct locations. We're going to build out this. Cabinets are bought like th this. These cabinets one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I think in the corner they're all bought. Butcher block is bought. The thing we have to make is this, this outside thing, with John's uh, table building skills. This thing where the where the water heater goes in there. Those we're gonna have to just build. That's cutting some plywood and, and doing all of that. So that's that's that. After that, there's a finished floor. Um, there's finished floor like like here this is say the second floor there's finished floor there's uh, electrical wires which primarily consist of um, actually I'll show you in the, in the file here the electrical consists of like um, let's let me uh, hide some layers here Sorry, I, I didn't like, want to derail this. But, but what you're saying is plumbing, water supply, cabinets, electrical, and floors. Yeah. I okay. mean, it sounds insane, right? Um, and not really. Not, it's not really if you have the digital design, which we claim to do. Yeah. So, um, so, for example, oh, this is not derailing. This is... Uh, 
Plum Kitchen Templates. Do you have the material already on site? Or is that built into the 11th to the 15th to get it? No, no, not, not to get it. That then will have to be on site. So like right now, for example, uh, like for the electrical, um, show you the, the working doc here. I mean, it's the electrical box. Today I was uh, looking at, okay, here's all the breakers we gotta get. So we're gonna build this, um, build this electrical box. This is what's gonna look like inside. Those are like 20 breakers. Um, they're gonna be so we're gonna have a box like this and put in those twenty bur like more like a box like this and mm -hmm. twenty mm -hmm. breakers for me so, and then we're gonna run basically each one of these greens. I already spec out okay the G GFCI versus AFCI outlets normal outlets wire type and running a wire is means like for example here that's one you know why this one wire goes to all the countertop. And mm -hmm. that thing goes from the breaker box, and it's inside this channel. So basically, I have to no drilling of holes through walls. This is in a, in a channel, stuff like that. Like, take the wire. If you if you know how to connect that wire to the box, you run it along the wall, and so you got, all you got to do is staple it to the wall and run it. Like, make a connection inside each of these these uh, okay. these things. So with five people, like I'm I'm expecting that what we just talked about to get finished. Now the the final touch up is now the finished floor and the second floor should either be vinyl or like these wood planks we've got that were mm -hmm. more like DIY. Um, <clears throat> this is like you know, mapping out. Here I'm still like finishing up. Here's like I'm laying out where all the boxes and stuff like that on the first floor and stuff like that. Um, simplifying the electrical grid. Yeah, you ever hear of kinetic switches? Mm -hmm. Those are things like you have to have a floor, a light, like on the first floor and the second floor has to be a three-way light. You have to turn it off from the bottom or the top. That where it gets complicated. But here, kinetic switch, it's wireless. It's wireless, no batteries needed, so it's a lifetime, and then that simplifies it greatly, so stuff like that. But yeah, that, and that's about the scope of work. Um, Got it. Yeah. Great. That's but we awesome. have to put on, like after that, after we lay all that, that's basically like rough in. Uh, with the like, uh, with like, all the kitchen appliances, like we have the rough in, and oh wait, wait, yeah, we gotta now slap in the kitchen appliances, plug them all in into into the cat, you know, fridge by where it's at, the induction cooktop. There's the water heater uh, that's gotta be put in the bathroom cabinet. I didn't talk about it, but bathroom. There's the tub that's gonna be in there already. Um, yeah, so a bunch of stuff. Uh, with four people, that's expected to take four weeks with one person. That's what I was planning here. I said, nah, let's get a few people here and maybe we can do it together. So this and is now, happening here that is build finish phase. Um, how, how are you going to communicate the CAD to the builders for the 11th through the 15th? Yeah, I mean, we got we to gotta do things like <clears throat> like the cheat sheets, like print out. So for example, if you have the, the master files, <clears throat> like here, we would do a cheat sheet that says, okay, oh, uh, well, actually it's kind of like already here. Uh, we've got design docs like, here's, uh, like give me an example what a cheat sheet would look like. Um, what I would want for that day It'll be more like this. Here, you can actually see every little part, and you see how it, and you see the, you know, put distances on these, how long you have to cut these pipes. And then, of course, you have the real build there, so you can compare it to where the walls are and stuff like that. But it's, it's like all, like, it's got the parts here, all the parts will be on hand. All you gotta do is cut them to length and, and, um, install them together. Like here, okay, install this U, U thing. And so it's PVC gluing of these things. Uh, that's right. kind of how it, this kind of stuff, and, and better than this, I mean, that's that's what we're trying to work out uh, in our ample spare time until then. But, you know, we got to take a look at the CAD, what the CAD says. You can, I mean, you can see this, like, for example, for that plumbing file, you can open up the CAD and see, look at it exactly how it, how it looks and stuff. So then you can lay it against <clears throat> the other layers, like, okay, here's actually the you know how it lines up against all the framing and stuff uh so 
so as many like screenshots and here's this distance is this and that uh, that kind of stuff you, put, you like you like have a, you like have a laptop on site yeah you could do that or, and then um you can take measurements so, here like you, i mean this is all real this is all for real so yeah, yeah. You can actually get it out of this okay and you can hide i mean you can completely like you know hide everything and stuff like that so you can is it, get all the details out of it you know is it feasible to do like i i don't want to buy the water but like yet you can you can um task organize your team whoever shows up in a way that makes this really straightforward that's applicable to the actual production build. Yeah. Is, is that something you're interested in, in exploring or? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah. I mean the, the ideal thing for this would be to, to like basically say, okay, we've, for example, we've got all electrical in a pile. There's Jim, Jim Bates, who we saw at the meeting. Uh, he's actually coming in. he's an electrician so so for example he'll be like oh, okay cool i get it like here's the box here's the outlets i get it okay that's where they go uh he can probably look, open up the cat and look at measurements in there too if there's any questions but ideally like just the mechanical steps of laying all those wires out the important data point is okay is this going to take like literally like uh, you know, a, a day, which we have a budget for in a real build. Like, can one person build it in a single day? That means, but see, in a real build, you've got 24 people, and can they all swarm on that? And, of course, they would have to have much more uh, specific instructions there, like, uh, if they're not skilled. But if somebody show, is shown how to wire in a box, well, they can wire the next box over uh, and stuff like that because it's snipping, it's making cuts, you know, with a wire stripper and stripping wires and... Is unscrewing like the little contacts on say the the receptacle and stuff like that putting the lid on the whole thing and, yeah yeah so now go ahead well I was just thinking like one person like we there's a cut list or a materials list for for one thing like the plumbing you just do like have everyone focus on one thing the plumbing and say yeah we could do that what I'm in charge of inventory. This person is in charge of cutting and sizing and fitting, and this person is in charge of showing of like ins installation. That's a rough approximation of what I'm talking about, but like that is a um, as opposed to just saying like, "Hey, group of four people, here's the CAD and here's what needs to get done." Self-organize. And that, that it's the difference between like self organizer on the CAD versus there's some leadership. So there's at least one person overseeing the process. Yeah. CAD, what I mentioned about the CAD is the like the absolute minimum if we, we don't do anything mm -hmm. about this. But obviously, if we have the time, we can generate the cut lists and all of that. So it's so, uh, so that doesn't have to be done in real time. I mean, that's real. Like, if you have a cut list, you can take that entire CAD, CAD piece and say, here's the cut list, just cut all these, and bam. So now you've got all the pieces, and then right. all you need to do is screw them in together, right. plug them together one after another, and bam. It, it, if you, yeah, if you sense hesitation on my part, it's only because I'm not the one who's been knee-deep knee in this thing. And so I, I, don't, I don't want to presume that you haven't already thought of this stuff. No, no, no hesitation. It's absolutely valid. Um, um, okay, so uh, kind of curious, like going back to the the glide path that you had just shown, um, talking about like what our constraints are for permitting and what's the earliest possible build date. I didn't see in there like the uh, assembling the crew and well, well, two questions really. Like one. What assumptions are you basing this on in terms of our ability to get 24 people and any preparation we can provide them before the actual yeah. build date? Mm -hmm. And then the second question is, what is your assumption here? How does funding play into this timeline? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, so I would add. So, John, you're already getting us a crew of something. Like you're already getting us a crew according to this. <laughs> no, but. Um, you might help out here. Here is what we could do is uh, I want to do, there's people, there's like five people that already said they would show up to this October build. 
um, there's so this is like let's I mean, we have to decide like exactly how we can do it but one possibility is okay definitely six crew leaders how many we got we got myself we got Iris that definitely wants to come there's Jim Bates that definitely wants to come we got three we're uh, four you that was you if possible um, we need two more at least as far right. as people who are gonna like we, we could use a, a carpenter and a plumber um, so, but we need to build a, build a bit, a bit of crew. That's where I would see like the YouTube possibly or whoever like we're just laying announcements out. Uh, but the event announcement that goes on Eventzilla announcements. So basically, a bunch of people. Like imagine twenty four people show up. I think I think if we posted an Eventzilla announcement, twenty four people would show up. Now, do we have uh, enough organization to make that a worthwhile experience? Um, <clears throat> Uh, the worst case, like, assuming, like, we've got what we have right now, we've got, I mean, we do have things like, for example, just to show you, um, wall module design guide. We do have a lot of materials already, like, um, for example, uh, on the wall building, like, say, um, like, how do you build the wall modules? Well, we spent actually some, some of this last summer going through like here's each module um like this like we got a bunch of this stuff kind of stuff already like okay here's how you build this so material cut list tools that kind of thing so you know this kind of these kind of templates so this kind of stuff we absolutely got to get you know here's a cheat sheet cut this drill holes if you need to or do this or that um this kind of thing would get us to where we, if we have 50 of these, there's 50 wall modules. There's in fact 69 total. We, we j have to generate 69 of sheets like this. And with this and a crew leader, like showing just, okay, here's the first one. We could pull it off. That's how we've done it before. We had, um, we had about three or four crew leaders in the build here where we did the entire structure and everything else uh, minus interior finish with this 1400 square build with 50 people in the five days. Um, now here, so outside the framing now, obviously we've got the thing, the big thing of, um, you know, the build finish, the interior stuff, which is complex. But if we prove it out, like, you know, coming up July 11, 15, that it's actually as manageable as we think, then that could be turned into basically like this kind of stuff. Okay, cut these pipes like this and that. And, um, let just basically for the electrical all you literally have to do like it um literally all you have to do is okay here's the breaker box here's the two wires that you actually connect at the breaker box now just run this along the wall all the way to that bathroom outlet bam done you know? right and in between you you have to actually wire it through all the electrical outlets so you're basically doing like this you know to each outlet if there's outlets before that so that you know that's like oh yeah 24 people can take the 24 wires in one one hour potentially or two hours to actually wire up the entire house it's like that that's the goal uh and it could could definitely happen because um it's not like oh you, now you gotta wait for this hole to be drilled or like this the, the dependence we're kind of removing all the dependencies like once you have this rough phase you've got the outlet box mounted you could literally give like these spools of wire to like 10, 20, you know, it's going to be like congested there. But so as people, sure. uh, first person runs their wire, they disappear and they continue running and the next person starts and it, it could be done pretty quick. So uh, I expect that, that type of a flow um, to be doable. I mean, it's extreme, it's super extreme, but once, once it's, um, once it's all worked out and, it, and you know, we, we figure out how to do it, it's, it's completely doable in terms of the time allotted with the number of yeah, we're saying. I totally see that. Um, the level of synchronization, like, my priors in coming to this is, like, the level of synchronization that you're talking about requires rehearsal and a, a very cohesive team that everyone has the same picture of what's going on. And that is something that requires a lot of preparation uh, and, and maybe I'm wrong about that, but like, that's the first thing that comes to mind. The, if we, so are you referring specifically to inviting a bunch of people who are non-builders to this? Because the other route is we now recruit explicitly for people who know how to build things. 
and that way we no got it. it yeah B building skill is actually to me not the the critical factor the critical fact like i don't even think documentation is necessarily a limiting factor either to me the most critical thing is the cohesiveness of the team that you assemble because yeah, like, it, how they call to order who's doing what just like giving directions constantly and then supporting so like when you're when you're talking about the six crew leaders initially and you named yourself like yeah. i think the best strategy is you, you you're you're the symphony conductor yeah. And the only people that you talk to are the six crew leaders so that you can give them instruction and you can, oh, you, your big picture, you have to, there has to be somebody who's big picture thinking and saying only, and you never get into the details other than to say that is not going according to plan or that's out of sequence. Uh, because without that, it's, it can, it's going to turn into a clusterfuck. Well, uh, this is a real B and H customer Sorry. story. Steph made this came to B and H to take her photography to the next level. So look at this, for example. This is one hour, fifteen minutes real build time after the modules were in place, and this is a six-minute video. Um, so in this video, which I'm gonna minimize. First floor of house framed in one hour. Uh, well, here we're actually s squaring the foundation, but once we got to this point, like where we're actually laying out the first module, it took one hour with 24 people available. So the coordination we have proven out in terms of, uh, so this is lunchtime, we get back okay now we came out after lunch and this is how it works so that coordination yeah it's, it's some coordination but look at that everyone's like standing around <clears throat> so yeah so with six crew leaders doing this which they would of course coordinate it. so here we're doing this pretty inefficiently because there's one side that's coming up I hope that other side is actually coming. It could be coming up on the other side from the four corners. Here, we didn't have enough leadership. Like, I was the only one pretty much leading it. Um, no, no, we do. We do. We had enough wherewithal to, I, to have two sides come up at the same time. So this can go up pretty fast. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I want to be clear. Like, I believe you. I, I, I'm not doubting that it can be done. All I'm saying is that on the ground in October, whenever the first production house is built, on the ground, the people that are there, are they going to have the same relationship with each other that this crew has at the moment that they're doing this video? At so, the like, moment, what's, the, what's yeah. the backstory of these people? How many days have they spent together? How much time have they spent looking at the design? How much hands-on experience did they have assembling the modules? Like, to recreate that that lead up from the day they arrived at OSC to this point that we're watching, how do we replicate that before the production build get in the timeline that you've mentioned? I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm not saying like it's a, it's insurmountable and I believe you that it can't be done. You, so otherwise it wouldn't be here. I'm just saying like that wasn't factored into the uh, timeline that you like you presented at the beginning. And so, like these are like to me, these are the important questions we need to answer before we we say this is the date we want to start. And like that's even before you start talking about like funding. There there are critical like mission decision points before you can even break ground that we haven't reached yet. And I'm just curious, like how each of you are thinking about that. Yeah. So first of all, the people in this build have been there for two days, and they have had no experience in building most of them. There's six people out of the 24, so 18 people are fresh off the boat. They arrived here two days ago. Okay. Got it. Um, Got it. And six of them were in an internship program, the apprenticeship, so that they, they had some experience preparing the modules. But these modules were built by the people in the two days former with zero, mostly zero experience. And pretty Got much it. no, even no CAD prep, prep. I mean, we didn't, we didn't even meet with the people before the event to go over the build or design. We just said, okay, here's Monday out of the five day week. And said, hey, we're, we build these houses like this. Uh, you signed up, let's do it. And we go through basics of, 
um, the design and then you just say, hey, it's these modules, we've got you know, them name like one back five back there and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. we've shown already that it's quite doable uh, in terms of, um, yeah, like, like, like this, because they're, they're largely, it's a, very, it's a very modular process. Now, um, so let's go back to the, the, the critical path. What do we need to put, put in here to make sure all the dependencies are here? Now, this event, like we might decide that, ah, I don't know, we really need, uh, we might go from a build crew of like 12 experienced um, build crew, like maybe, maybe six leaders, six builders, and then 12 inexperienced, 12 plus inexperienced. That would be like easy. I think mm -hmm. you can have as many experienced people and that means people will not have to even work hard they'll be actually enjoying themselves more they'll be like like if you see some people here as we're laying out the wall modules relaxing um, yeah I mean it's you know like it's actually like probably like 50% of the people are watching things being done they're not like here this is a good example that's what happens like right. some people are yeah. working some people aren't um which, which is mitigated with leadership and yeah. planning and yeah yeah um okay so what is what, what what about funding i mean i keep coming back to this but i feel like we don't have a concrete answer yeah, on we how we're going to pay for this and there's going to be ex yeah. oh well f money for materials um, so here's the funding thing. This assumes that we're going to have a tractor and trailer, tractor, trailer, track, truck, slash, um, what do you call it? A trailer. Now, uh, we need to actually ask, ask Martin if that's going through, because if not, we don't have any money for infrastructure for like hauling stuff. Um, that would be the, the big thing, because we're assuming that we're going to be going out uh, like the, the ideal assumption would be we gather so here uh, like gather material so we put we get deliveries like all the orders happen here um like after the permit because you don't want to like buy everything and find the permit actually like for some reason you know maybe even then go through or something so so here you got to get your materials um load get order materials load on trailer and then on the build day, you deliver it all to the site, or you can actually, you know, del ship it out there. Be well, yeah, like have it out on the site right before. Order materials. I feel like my my role is pretty clear. It's the financing and the lot. Well, um, you know, the financing could be like, uh, is the answer yes or no from Martin, right? Yeah. We need to find out, because because if not, what happens? I'll uh, I'll get along. I mean, what's what's the latest possible date we could get a funding decision? Okay, good point. Funding decision. You know what I mean? Like um, it, funding decision. Can, what, when is it? When do you think? Uh, I think it would be after engineering when we're... I mean, if that's the case, we need to move land acquisition because we can't pull the trigger on land acquisition unless okay, we... Okay, land acquisition. No, 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 we got funding, man. We got, we got like uh, 130K left. We got that enough. I'm saying more money like for the, tra the truck and trailer and if... Yeah, right now it's not sounding anything like like two builds at one time, because two builds would mean double the people. So uh, I don't know what, what to say about that. Um, let's let's discuss how we get to build one, and then what happens to here, or do we go like like this? No, that doesn't make sense. Um, something like this would kind of make sense. Um, are there? Yeah, um, funding. 
Yeah, I mean, the, no, no, I mean, the funding is like, well, sorry, let's get on the same page on the funding. The funding is is a uh, decision is insofar as do we even have the possibility to look at potentially getting two lots and therefore we actually getting the ball rolling on the next build. Because if we're going to have to like, if we go all the way to build one and we did nothing on, okay, how are we preparing for build two, three, four, or four, or whatever, X, build next. Uh, I'm saying we might want to get like land and other things and possibly materials like all here so we're ready for actually one or two builds whenever the second build is decided. Because otherwise we got to go through that whole cycle. You know what I mean? Like we can kind of like, this is where the economies of scale start to, you know, like building the first one is super hard because you're still trying to finish up or, or like make sure you know what you're doing. But after that, it's like you can be scaling to, okay, now we can, we know we can do two, three, four in the exact same way, as opposed to, oh, we have to change some things, right? So the funding decision is only in so far as we even begin to think about what happens on build two. That's, that's really, does that make sense? Um, or no? No, no, no. It makes sense in, in terms of, like, if, if you assume that 130K covers... Yeah. All the expenses we have to get build one done, then yeah, that makes yeah, sense. No, I mean we need a little buffer there. Like we need we need a little more. Um, so yeah, have we have we updated the um, the price of the house according to like so, all the increases? Yeah, I mean right now uh, more or less it's sixty k from initial of more like uh, it went from the minimum 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 price we had on the table was thirty five. Um, I believe we started with 35, now it's 60. Like we started with like 33, now it's 60. Um, so yeah, that's the 60 plus, I'm, I'm budgeting, I would budget 50K for labor, which hopefully is more than enough. I mean, the thing is with, um, you know, in terms of getting builds happening, like the 50K of labor allows us to get like, we can recruit, like we can go with an entire skilled crew, you know? Like, and that would be one way to mitigate any of the you know, risks involved with, okay, how are we actually gonna build this? Are we gonna be able to get working with less experienced people, right? So uh, one scenario could be for build one, we just spend 50K on labor, which is like paying well for, and actually getting people with experience to show up, uh, assuming it's, it's 1,000 hours at 50 bucks an hour, which is like, you know, people typically get paid like 25 bucks as a builder, but um, but in order to, well, in order to get them for that one dedicated build, we might have to pay more. That's why we're budgeting like 50 bucks per. Uh, I mean, one of my, yeah, one of my concerns, speaking of buffers, is we commit, like, we advertise this program as a 50 bucks an hour, five day build and then something happens where it takes longer than five days yeah and then we need it oh we just need to have a plan to be able to say um here's how this is going to impact your wages for this build yeah well exactly we're gonna have to say say maybe like oh maybe we actually say we're, we're 30 bucks an hour but we're actually budgeting for like 60 percent overrun in time because that 20 bucks would, you know. So we budget 30, 30K for labor, and then we have 20K to finish up because we didn't finish finish in time. Um, that's, but those numbers. Or another way, another, another option is to say like, you're gonna get paid $2,000. Yeah. Regardless of how, until this house is complete, and we, we can think we can complete it in five days. Yeah. Yeah, that's, I think that's quite reasonable. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. And, and I mean, two thousand bucks for five days work. And I mean, then you, your incentives are aligned properly because yeah. you're now you're not. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, maybe maybe write that down like um, <laughs> two thousand for all the it takes to build the house. Right. And I mean, you're, we're we're attracting people who are like they're going to be motivated motivated to for, to make the money it's not just about building a house it's like they're motivated by the unique aspect of this yeah. so yeah. um so yeah, I mean, flat fee so, so, so there's 
I mean, there's this, but then again, we can say, oh yeah, we're actually buffering the, you know, the participants on the fact that, oh, we actually get a team of 24 skilled people and all the participants are extra and they're actually subsidizing the event because they're getting some edu education value from it. We position that as that. What I would do is I would do several days of, of webinars. So maybe like five days of, you know, five hours or so of webinar preparatory to, to show people exactly what they're getting into so they can be most productive and stuff like that. Got it. I think right. that will be really valuable for many people. I mean, I think people are uh, wowed by this idea that they can even begin to touch tools and, and actually build this, the most expensive item in, in their life's journey. So right. I think that's, that's still a good, good proposition, but we, we may want to just consider that as, okay, here's extra help that's actually subsidizing the program and then we'll get real data on, okay, how much did it actually help? How much uh, professional labor do we need? How much unskilled labor exactly? You know, just getting better data on all those points of exactly what it, the kind of, uh, how, how it looks. Yeah. Now, the, just to just remember that there's the St. Joe slash KC debate. We ain't doing it in five days in KC because of the three day delay on, on getting the inspector guy out there. So we've been through that. We we found it out already. So, so the only way wait 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 wait. I heard I heard that if we hire a third party inspector, that they could do it quicker. If you hire a third party inspector, they can do it quicker. They can get to the to the foundation up to the roughen framing. The roughen framing phase, which is like you know half halfway through the build. Yes, that to that. Wait, John, John, r remind me. Did they say that they can only do the foundation or they can also guarantee? No, no, look, they, they said they can only get us up to the third party on the foundation. The rough in, right, John, actually has to be by the by the city inspector. Yeah, that sounds right. Um, yeah. I, so, yeah, but, it could help, but it, but it doesn't help like the big, big inspection in the middle, which is still there. Now, Brian, you also said that, well, maybe maybe this guy's got like more insight, but I mean, I talked to an, enge a, you know, an engineer who works in Kansas City, and so did, yeah. uh, I don't think the answer's gonna be different. I don't think that has changed. Um, but, well, no, it's, it's somebody that the, you have to find a company that is on an approved list for inspections so it's basically the same as a city inspector. Yeah, but that's that's the thing. That's not, that's 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 actually better than the reality. Because yes, of course, it's going to have to be a person on an approved list. This guy was, but the, those people on an approved list can only go up to the foundation inspection. That's the only thing. Oh, interesting. If which uh, now the, I can ask my friend who told me about that. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's talk to him. I uh, yeah, I actually got to call him and, and talk to him. Like that's that's the guy, right? No, it was a different guy. Different guy? Yeah. But I, I mean, never actually talked to that guy, Patrick. I just got introduced to him by email, and I thought he was a good candidate. But wait, you, who's you know, the there was some stopped email. In, stopped in to visit you. You said you, this what guy do you mean? just stopped in and visited me. I thought it was the the guy that is related to the. House building inspections, all of that. No, it was just a guy that I met online. Okay. He, he so reached now, out on one of our websites. Yeah. And he has experience in building. Yeah. Now, now there is hope. Like the only thing it requires is that we have a contact. We're friend. You know, we're actually friends with the people who are in the city. And they can say, okay, you know, we're nego we're negotiating with you like right now. We're talking to them at the plan check phase, and we say, hey, can you guys for this special case, can you actually uh, dedicate somebody to come to our site at this hour? That's what it would take. Like, yeah, it, I mean, because I know the director of city planning. So, if you can help me understand who, I mean, I, I think I I need to do some legwork on that. It, yeah. But the, the city, the city employees and the city, they're just a mess. Yeah. And so even if they say they're going to come out, we should probably expect them for 
to not show up or something, you know? Well, that's exactly what happens. You, you order it, you order the inspection, you go to this online portal, and the, on the portal it says, yep, we'll, we'll be out there in 24 hours. And um, that 24 hours happens to be three days from <laughs> people who... John, who's, John talked to a guy who's, who builds in Kansas City, and that's what he said that is. I mean, is it, is it fair to say that like, we need to be prepared for two contingencies? The first is we operate on the uncertain timeline of inspections, which means that it'll be five days of actual building labor, but the calendar days may be extended. And we just need to build that into the plan when we're recruiting people to do this. And then the second contingency is we can work with Brian as we go through the permitting process to prepare to find the name of the people who we need to contact and give give them the information they need to show up exactly where we want them to. Mm -hmm. And in yeah. order to get to that point, we need to have a, a robust enough plan for how this, with concrete dates, to go to them to say, all right, we're two months out, we own the land, we have the, we have the permits, everything's ready to go, we're finalizing the, the crew preparations right now. On this date at this hour, can can we get a special, you know, exception to get this inspector out at this time? And then we just develop a relationship with that person so that we stay in contact and confirm before they should, you know, show up. Yeah, that's that's. Uh, can we do that, <clears throat> Brian? You think we can do it? I mean, we we can't say anything until we actually try. Yeah, we just have to try. And well, I just. If, so we build a plan that says, okay, it's going to be like five days or eight days or more. Now, see, that gets a little risky because that assumes that in that, on that third day, <laughs> here's the other part. Uh, the engineer that I talked to said that one in a hundred gets passed on the first time. So, I don't know. How do we negotiate that one? Um, I mean, we he said that yeah. a house being built through the entire plan check process is about one in a hundred that he sees that have zero rework. Now, Rework can be maybe simple, it can maybe longer, but, but that's why people take eight months to build a house. <laughs> I mean, is there, it, we have, we given the time, is there a way in which yeah. we can get inspectors out to the rosebud? Right. And have them see it before? Well, yeah, like... I don't think that is realistic, but okay. it's, it, unless you, unless they're doing it off hours and they're inspired, so, you know. So see, now that is Kansas City, but we haven't checked any other cities around it. What if the other cities actually say, because St. Joe said they can, we can, with lead time, they appear at a scheduled time. That's what they told us. I mean, Brian, do you think that this is a sufficiently exciting development opportunity for the people you know in Kansas City government to allocate some effort to helping us make it work? I mean, if, if the answer to that question is yes, then that should be something that we like actively pursue as we're going through the permitting process. Yeah. No, I, I do think so. I just have to feel it out, yeah. you know, in terms of who's the right person and how up the chain do we need to go on this. Right. So um, set... And it also depends around, like, you know, where it is and who's involved. And because yeah. there's, there's di just different stories that, we're pitching, yep. depending on all that. Right. So, what's the next question we want to want to ask uh, in this meeting? Well, I mean, I think well, I think we need to. We, sorry, Brian, I didn't mean to interrupt. Go ahead. No, I just um, when you have the plus foundation there, I would just say site prep. You know, because there's going to be. Um, grading and you know we're, we're assuming that the site is meeting a certain criteria that it has like utilities and all the that's things that's all done like way before that's like when we get the land the utilities and okay. all that, that's that's at the phase of of due diligence on land um what about the grade the grading you can't put in a foundation without grading so so that assumes that that's uh, grading would be okay. like, if anything, so like grading, to be explicit, yeah, we can say grading foundation. 
the only reason why I'm bringing it up is because one of the sites that we have basically offered to us has some serious grading work that needs to happen. And that's just uh, so, a matter of you're adding cost. So does that work out in the budget? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so um, <clears throat> but my, my instinct here is to zoom out and look at this thing comprehensively so that between now and our tentative start date, it doesn't have to be concrete yet, we create a common picture for every the three of us in this room and all of the people who are showing up on Fridays. And then the Friday meetings that are occurring should turn into like a 20 minute update to the world about how we're proceeding along this plan. And like that'll serve two two functions. One, it'll organize the, the effort of the people actively doing this. And two, it will be like fully in line with the OSE transparency of like, here's what we're doing, soup to nuts. And that way it'll ha also help with recruiting because people who are potentially interested can see the exact level of progress that we're making. And um, like all of the open questions we have right now about funding and land acquisition and permitting and everything, we will just answer those as we progress and as as they become the, like the most salient yeah. problem to solve at that time. I love that. Just love it. But let's clarify now what gets worked out at which point. So like Brian, you're asking, oh, what about, like, can we connect the utilities? So what do we know so far? Well, we know that any questions regarding code compliance or buildability of the things that we're planning within the Rosebud model, that all gets worked out in engineering. So no questions after engineering come about whether like this is a code compliant design. That's what the engineer is hired for. And we pay like yeah. 2000 bucks for that. Now, before that, before we go to the engineer, we've got the land acquisition phase. And in the land acquisition, like we would say, okay, here's a lot that looks good. Um, in the land acquisition, we also figure out like whether it's, so even deciding as broadly as this is just a regular bill that we put on the open market versus, okay, now here's Brian who's interested in, in doing this. Uh, are the economics also lining up in a land acquisition? Like, okay, what is the lot of the price? What does that mean for the end cost to at the very end of the day? What are the right. costs going to be with utilities? At that point, you do the due diligence and you find out, okay, what is my water con water sewer connection? What is my electrical connection? And any other issues like, for example, you got to, whatever else you got to do to the lot, whatever, there might be some special special cases like the, the soil is completely uh, wrong or it's, it's in a mud pit and you have to just truck in 20 loads of soil or something, you know, that's a cost. So you figure out those kinds of things. Or the house, there was a house before that had a basement and it wasn't, you know. Yeah. Or it's, um, it's a toxic waste, it was a toxic waste dump and you actually have to do remediation, which cost, would cost $70,000 in five years. That would uh, right. obviously make it non-go. Uh, but main things being um, utility connections, electrical, water sewer now what else is there there's not much the biggest concern there for kansas city we know that if the sewer or electrical water sewer and electrical are on the other side of the road that's a very expensive cut through the street that's that's like one of the big things probably we have to watch out for there uh, but everything regarding the land suitability like for example if it's if it's like on the side of a hill well, we know we're going to have to do extensive grading that can get quite expensive. Like if you have to do actually like things like retaining walls or special provisions for water runoff or whatever, um, that is, that's definitely something that will come out here. We just won't, like we will sign the contract saying, yes, we're interested in buying this pending our due diligence. And then we have up to like the very end of the, the time to make sure that we actually yeah. buy this because we did the due diligence. And then... That can overlap the engineering right. a little bit, but 
but the engineer they can do all the structural stuff but then they have to actually verify that the lot they have to when they make the actual final you know site elevation blueprints and all that they do all of that they prepare the entire building package for the building department they will basically have to put it on a real plot of land like with real boundary lines and stuff like that so the land is actually a prerequisite to and where uh, where do we find the water sewer electrical utilities like information the the kansas city has a site that talks about it and beyond that there's i, I don't know uh, it will depend well in kansas city i don't know specifically where there's, there's going to be things online there's going to be you might have to contact the actual like for example for the last one we we actually had to contact uh, the, 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 a lot of the info is actually not open to the public, so you either have to ask or you have to like even ask contractors who've maybe done work or neighbors. Like One thing would be you, you talk to the neighbor next door, oh yeah, my water line's right on my lawn. That means, oh yeah, well, it's, it's probably running to your lot and stuff like that. Or well, you can, you can call the utility, yeah, can't you, can you call and the have the ground market. Yep. Oh yeah, of course. Um, Call the utility company. They're going to be able to do that probably, probably for free. I don't know if they charge here. Free. It it should be for free because they have to do that if you're going to dig anything, anyways. Right, right. Before you dig, you're you've got all the lines marked up. The utility right. company, power company, internet company. Those three parties at least have to go out there, make sure okay. that you're not yeah. going to hit any other lines. Well, while it's fresh on my mind, March, and I just want to like flag. Here's what I think I'm going to do before Friday. Before Friday, I'm gonna take your critical path and turn it into a plan. Yeah. A running a running plan to organize all of the blocks that you have on here mm -hmm. so that when we when we show up on Friday for the next meeting, we can spend twenty minutes where you run through where we are mm -hmm. and what we need so that the meeting turns into a call to action for the people who are interested. And then they can orient around things not just the CAD, um, but like this is the where we are with land acquisition. Here are our open questions if anybody has any knowledge about this. And like that would apply to Brian and, and anybody else who's in the Kansas City area that could actually be an asset there. So mm -hmm. does that one, does that make sense? And and like are you cool with that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It makes sense. I'm cool with that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because these meet like like these meetings can spiral if we get too far into the detail, I think. Yeah. And, and like w like in this room we need to be staying high level and right now like what i see happening is your 11 july 11 through 15th is a is a short target in which you're proving and testing a lot of things yeah. involved in finishing the house um you have to do that before we go to engineering is that yeah. correct so like well, that's yeah, dependent I mean, on that yeah and then look at the cat update and I was hoping that uh, some people might, uh, the, the Friday meeting, we can enlist some people or we can work with some people that worked with us before regarding CAD. So, the, so that has so to the, the the model, yeah, has to be updated pretty much, like cleaned up and stuff. Right. So like, like that, that can be a running effort as you're, yeah. as you complete the house. But, um, if our mission like let's, we should probably start with agreeing on what the mission is. the mission is to build the first house in october yeah like forget build two three and four for a second like that that is the mission we have to complete that mission before we do anything else and if we agree on that in this room then like everything else we do with documentation only serves to accomplish that mission and like the friday meetings are a good venue in which to say like this this meeting, which is recorded as a potential webinar, we're going to cover the wall modules and what we still need to reconcile to turn this into a workable document. And we can go through a different section of the house each Friday because people already know that we need CAD, but at least at least in a sequential, like yeah. logical fashion, you're breaking it up into like easily digestible chunks. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, like we're not producing the, the the mission here is not to produce a build bible in October. The mission, the, the immediate mission is to build the house, right? Yeah. And if we have experienced crew members 
And we have people who have attended the webinars and we put this information out for anybody who can, who's interested. We mitigate a lot of the need for the like, you know, product work and focus more on the, the actual thing we're trying to do, which is build the house. Mm. And, and each person who specializes and leads each section can probably do that CAD faster and better. That wow. portion of it. Um, so I had a stupid question, which was, is there a general contractor that you're using for this? No, we don't have a general contractor. No, that, that's, I guess that's, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, we need a general contractor. Uh, that means uh, we collaborate with somebody or I get a license or something, that the test, there's a test if, if I want to do that or somebody else wants to do that but I, I mean the way I was looking at it is because I'm going to be running these builds some, at some point I got to probably get a contractor's license that would be a good thing because part of the value proposition is well here's how you how you do that and here's how you learn for it effectively open source yeah. up, up a bit can you do that before October well yeah, yeah. Or it's, a, it's, a, it's called probably like three days of study and and going into Kansas City to take the test Yeah, it's that easy, huh? I mean, I should know most of it, most of everything that's on it at this point. I've studied a lot of stuff on the build build part. Is there a risk to you being the general contractor and trying to uh, conduct the symphony or be the big picture thinker, or are those two things like correlated highly enough? Well, I think those, I think those are cor correlated highly because the general contractor Great. is the guy who's supposed to be on the side. He's like running the show is there anyone okay. above the contractor not really there's there can be a construction manager but let's see who works for who does the construction manager work for the general contractor or is it the other way around everybody works with the as far as i know the general contractor is like the the like the safe leader in the room who's making sure everyone's safe and making sure the job gets done on time and under budget yeah, so they're kind of like the, the kind of the buck stops to them sounds like the construction managers and there could be mul multiple ones uh, i mean i think the role overlaps a little bit but i i would say the construction manager is is part of the it would be under the general guy what's the internet say Okay. Does a construction manager work for a general contractor? Contract construction manager versus general contractor. Two sides of the same coin? The difference between general contractors and construction managers. I don't know, there's no quick answer to respond to that. I don't know if there's a quick answer for that. It's like there's a lot of overlap. Because the general contractor is definitely a construction manager. They're managing the construction. The, the, the construction manager could be involved perhaps before, like here's like actually sourcing the materials, maybe taking care of the logistics even. But that's a management role. Contractor, I would look at more as the guy who's actually on site at that time. Whereas for a construction manager, I would say for a longer part before and after, I would say. I would associate the contractor more with the actual building, just the building part on site. Uh, yeah. Uh, there's a lot of overlap. I mean, I'm kind of like almost contradicting myself here from what I said before. I mean, I think traditionally the general contractor's role is to integrate all of the subs. Yeah, those are the subcontractors that say the trades, but what happens uh, to the bigger process before and after? Like before, there's a whole bunch of stuff that's like land acquisition. The general contractor may not be involved in that. I would say like if I'm... I'm yeah. going to show here, like, I got a construction man, or like, this is like the back end team. There's other roles, you know. 
Right. And due I, th I think I think like. They have, they have different spheres of influence, and they both fall under whoever's paying for the project. But the like they, this yeah, is, they all go yeah. like under the developer. Like um, it, it's all irrelevant if mm -hmm. you're the GC, and this is a, this isn't like a we're not building an apartment building, right? So I gladly uh, actually for the general contractor, man, we gladly get one to mentor us through the whole process. That's that's the call out to right. the world. Like imagine we get a really experienced right. GC guy who understands the business and makes sure we're not going to lose our pants on the fir first build. That that would be quite right. desirable for this. Okay. All right. That's good to. And then, yeah, I, mean, I, I, already, I think that would be. Well, yeah. I just just mentioning John. Like I was hoping that that guy was a builder in Kansas City. He could, like I'm literally saying, mentor me to be a general contractor because I want to teach others how to do that. That's part of the well, we have, value proposition. We have a lot of co started conversations with a bunch of people who could be huge assets, but what they're missing right now is concrete plan and action. I mean, so that's why like I if we so so this plan, this this organization that we're going to do I'll do before Friday and submit to you and we'll build on that. That can be the thing that we yeah. go to Whatever I forgot his name, Travis. Maybe be like, hey, look, it's happening. Here's a recording. If you want the full detail, but you know, can you support us in yeah, whatever he way? Already kind of said no. Right? He's, he's super busy and he can't do anything. Right, but we're getting true. But the difference between then and now is like, what happens if we get funding? That that changes things. And and we're giving him several oh, wow. months lead time and. I mean, well, said, I mean, like, for one whole, thing, it, he said like the whole year. I'm booked the whole year. Like that's what he said. It, well, it may not hurt. It may we'll not hurt find to ask. somebody though. Yeah, yeah no, it no, may not hurt to ask. ask. But but this is a no. But this is a very practical question. This is a practical practical issue that we run into a lot. Is that once you get to the high level enough, you can't buy the talent anymore because if they've got it, they're running with it. So it would have to be a special profile of a person, like for example, someone who's done it who's retired and now is actually giving sure. back or something like that, whatever. Yeah. Um, we, we won't know until we put it out into yeah, the universe. Yeah, yeah. No, no, absolutely not. But I'm just saying we, I wouldn't expect a person who's actively engaged in that field to have that kind of freedom because I know that the work is tough. And, and he said it. He's sure. just str struggling just, you know, to build his stuff. with. The, I mean, right now we got to consider the fact that um, no, we, we've got some challenges in terms of legit, like prices and availability and, and war and famine <laughs> across the world, disruption of supply chains and crazy prices and inflation. We're, we're working with that. So uh, it's not an easy, I, I would say it's not an easy time for anybody. I think it's probably easier for us because we're, we're so agile. I, mean, I think it's just as likely that somebody's attracted to the, to the mission and they're like, yeah. this is something I believe in, right? Like, yeah, we, don't, we don't want somebody who's motivated just by money. No, of course. All right, well, I'm, I'm putting that on my list. I'm, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, um, just to emphasize that, just, you know, for the clarity on that, that's literally, like, if someone's done it, they can look at what we're doing and, like, the various decisions, like, okay, here's this detail about the land or where we build or how we're doing it and they'll, they'll see okay uh, okay or, or you know watch out for this or watch out for that so because uh, they've done it and fallen for many pitfalls probably and, and i haven't this is the first time we're going out there so. yeah mm -hmm. yeah we might need to take off soon Okay, so what do we say about, um, so we have no, the answer what I thought was going to be the answer, uh, answer was answerable. Are we leaving well, ourselves she, enough, enough leeway if we just declare? Because there's, okay, there's two ways to approach it. One is called the window of opportunity approach. We say, we're going to do this then, and we can do only what we need to do to, to prepare. And it can work. It may, not, it may have delays, it may, it may have extra costs, but it'll get you a, a date which is valuable. That's a, that's a thing you can really start rallying on because I can tell you that we can be going through this process. What's happened already? 
I was yeah. you know, initially at the beginning of the year. I was hoping that the build would happen. Yeah, this is in history. What, what did we say before? No, no, don't. don't <laughs> you, don't, you don't need to dig it up. Uh, we, yeah, it's right but, here. like yes, you're. I completely agree with you. So let, like, let's put something on the calendar to plan off of. It, yeah, it so, will change. It's not perfect, but right. like so, the whole point of the Friday meeting is that we give running estimate like updates of like here's here's the the correct date or like here's what we're planning on we need some we need some anchor point okay, okay. so is that anchor point called october 10th yes i think that's as yeah. good as any yeah so october 10th we're building and and is it nine to five that whole week oh i think at that week at that point it's when when it's done i mean this is extreme and hold on hold on like for 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 the purposes of planning like let's let's again set the anchor yes nine to five october 10th through october 15th or whatever and then as the plan develops we can update that as we go forward nine to five is but so yeah i think it's put it, uh, or if, if it eight, eight to five eight to five yeah mm -hmm. With a and uh break. And is it, um, it's that whole week, and is it on your farm or is it on the site? Okay, build one is, this is the real deal. The, here, that's factory farm. October is, that's the thing I was trying to get. Are you the, the person, are we going to St. Joe or that? I mean, we don't have an answer for that. So do we ha have an answer? Not right now. Right, we're gonna find out. We're gonna um, feel it out. But I mean, I would, if we cannot get the people see, because um, if we cannot get that level of rapport from the city, then the other thing is we go around the city, somewhere else there, or St. Joe for the build one. Where in St. Joe, uh, we were told that yeah, you can't actually get the person to show up at the time. I mean, it's, Kansas City's got hundreds of builds at the same time. You know, they they show up when they show up, unless. We negotiate that. Right. So, I mean, if anything, maybe we can set, well, it's a deadline okay. for finding out the, the place. Because right now we can say it's Kansas City. Yeah, it's like Kansas City or St. Joe. But You said August 1st. August 1st? Uh, yeah. Yeah, a little before that. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the absolute cutoff because because the engineering has to have a location, so it has to be a little bit be before engineering. Yeah. And I got some good leads. Ultimately, I have to find the lot, and Remy needs to be cool with it, and we're 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 definitely committed to looking at different neighborhoods and stuff now. So there's a process. I also have two other lots that we could just build on and get that one built and just that let that be the first one. So I need to, I just texted the people and I need to follow up about that. So that's why I was making sure I knew the price. So if I can tell them, then, and then I asked about the general contractor because, you know, all that relates to the financing, I think. If someone wants, to, if I can get someone to say, yes, I want this house, I have a lot already, then that could just be the first house. And it's a good story. It's in a new, it's in a sort of a neighborhood that could use a shot in the arm. You know, they could use the house. I'm talking about a specific neighborhood that I have a relationship with. That would, you know, see it as an affordable housing. And that they actually have an entire four blocks of vacant land. Um, so there's two different sites that I have in mind, plus like my house where I need to go find a lot somewhere that meets my lifestyle. It's so, and I don't think we need to name a buyer to proceed. 
like that's not holding up progress right now. Mm -hmm. I, I want to just do it. I just think just it matters about finding it really it's about finding the right place to do it at which takes time. Are you frozen? No. I was just saying. Um, no, I, I think we got some good options, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna come back with some answers. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> so by when? Uh, that's uh, that's the question. Can we say by when? You said August first is like the drop dead date. Yeah, but that's that's okay. So here, the land acquisition is we start that process where uh, closing on a on a lot requires like you got to set thirty days minimum for that. So that's why July one to August one is the land acquisition part. So so we have to like I mean that decision really has to be made like on the land part. It's like here. It's like July one according to this map here. Um, because it takes a whole month, and we can't do the engineering without the, the land. So land stuff, uh, let's see, that's next week? No, that's, that's, that's problematic. What we can do is we can say, okay, this is a lot. We can, we can begin, we would have to begin due diligence. Like say we, we uh, put an offer on this land. Okay, so we, you know, we put a bid on it. And then we say to them, okay, we're gonna do all the due diligence to make sure it meets our meets our needs. Uh, so we, I mean, we have to move on something. Man, that's that's already troublesome because it's like that's a week from now. Um, I have some yeah. I have some options. Um, why why don't I? Let me check in. There's one lot that we have as a backup, no matter what. Um, maybe two. So we could just say, let those be the ones. But I need to, I need to confirm that, I think, is what I'm saying. Then there's the third, which is the one that I want to get. Yeah, I mean, we got to solve that. There's that window for the land acquisition. Something has to happen. Uh, which would lock us into a certain pathway. So we have to do the land plus due diligence to make sure everything works about it. Yeah. Including revenue model, like um, who's buying a house, how much is it sold for and stuff like that based on what we know. Um, and is that, yeah. Because I mean, the land land part. I mean, is there could be the different lots can have uh, significantly different costs from the land to the utilities to um, yeah. yeah. Land, land utilities um, are primarily like, like you're gonna get stuck with a lot that's like needs like a lot of work or whatever. The utilities for some reason the utilities there are just got crazier. There's some impact fee or something. I don't know. I don't know what can happen. Yeah. Um, and those numbers would end up being like, okay, now we got a, there's a client, we, we got a, we'll figure that out within the land acquisition time. Otherwise, we, the other one is where there is no client, it's put on the open market. That's the other route. Which is easier in some respects and it's harder in some respects. If I could just touch base with one of y'all this week or, you know, by, before that meeting on Friday, I'll tell you what I find out. Yeah. Because I, I might have two lots that we could use that are like, could just be our option to start with. I just need a little bit of time to go do some legwork, I think, on it. Mm -hmm. I can send an email or something. Mm -hmm. 
Does that work? Yeah, I think so. Jonathan? Yeah, absolutely. I, I want to <laughs> get one, but I just have to... It's going to take a process. Like, August 1st is a lot easier because I'm gonna, I am I need to figure out what neighborhood I want to live in, essentially. It's like a really big decision. So, uh, there's other houses. There's other lots that I've talked to different communities about. And they already have the lot. So, it would be kind of easy. Mm-hmm. Not, not to shift gears too much here, but uh, does who had the last communication with Martin? Uh, probably, I, probably I did my email. Yeah, we gotta we gotta touch back with him because um, what does that affect? I mean, there's a bunch of money in there for the documentation work. That's that's one thing. We can start spending money on. On documentation, for one, and then just like the well, it, it prevents you. F it prevents you from going <laughs> bankrupt. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, we gotta, it, it's yeah. more than just documentation. Like it's it's also uh, the the ability to adapt to contingencies we know we're gonna face. Right, right. That money has to come yeah. from somewhere. I'm, I'm, right. That would be an answer that, yeah. But I'm not, I mean, I guess why I'm not worried about it is because, uh, I would be. Right, yeah. I, I know how you're thinking about it. I, but also, like, um, I, yeah, that's not. Oh, I, I'm looking at the last. Um, I'm looking at the last uh, thing is whenever I responded saying, showing him that there's the um, the recording. Oh, that's right. The, okay. The call, and he goes, "Oh, I did not know that. How extremely transparent of you, Martin. The verbatim is great. The considered reflection also helpful." So he was kind of saying, "Tell me this." Sorry, you cut out. John, you there? Brian? I think that was before. Saying? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what the right strategy is here. Like, I don't know if reaching out again is yeah, yeah. No, I, I could reach the, out again. the best move. I'm I also want to, because, because what, okay, so, oh yeah, maybe you guys weren't on this string, but I, I had a string with him. I met with a guy from SUNY New York, New Paltz, and um, they're talking about the Fab Lab stuff, because they're building yeah. out a, a fabrication center, and they're, they're like, okay, well, let's see, let's, let me have a conversation with this guy, see how this also fits in. But the truth is, I, I can't do any of that right now. We're doing a house. So I was actually going to just, um, uh, clarify to him also the question like okay well uh, I mean if, if we do want to get involved in, re regarding this fabrication stuff I mean uh, that's not in the sequencing of these things we, I can't do that right now we got to do the house because that's what we're doing right now so I'm, I just had a you know, more questions like how does he think that that fits in the rollout because I, I didn't really see what he was getting at because um it's as if he's planning some bigger package, but we cannot execute on other parts until uh, more work, work on the house. I can't just lay, let the house go. You see, you see the you see what's happening right now. We're just trying to meet the critical path, right? So there's no, no distractions from from that are allowed at this point. Yeah. But anyway, I, I was gonna I was gonna just follow up. Just tell him tell him we do have a somewhat of a critical path and where, what his thoughts are. Um, well, I mean, I, I guess what I meant to say is like he, 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 he basically said like I'm still waiting to talk to the board about it. Like we're still in the de our decision making process. Yeah. And I just, I, all, my other question 
was like, was there any change from that? Or did he give us a, a date at oh, no. which he was going to reach out again? Okay, got it. No. no, no, I'm looking at 12 days ago. He was going to introduce you to another person named at the Farm Hub. And then he, he said, stand by for scheduling emails from my colleague, Kate. Yeah. Uh, so, which, so I, March and I, I wouldn't get into all the stuff you're talking about on email. Just wait. Let's just wait for the next call and just get the call. Yeah. My only concern was like, um, do you, do you see my point on that? It, it's that if, if that good, does go forward or whatever, how is it relevant right now? Because there's a rollout. Secrets. What goes forward? Yeah. No, like how does farm farming and, and manufacturing... Oh, it... It, I think he, I think he's just trying to play connector. Like he, I, I don't think it's I don't think it's tied directly to the decision over whether or not to fund OSC. It's it's just like you're potentially like there may be some overlap, and so maybe you guys have a good conversation, and yeah. that becomes fruitful over the long term. Like I, I don't think he was saying that to you. It's like you need to. This is contingent. This your funding is contingent on your relationship with this. Yeah. yeah. That, and also, I think if he does want you to, if he does want you to do anything, then it's a negotiation. Right. Like he can add on to the scope, and we can put it into the critical path together. You know, for next year or something. The year after. Right. Who knows. I would just say uh, we haven't heard from. I mean, I don't know. We we don't have to say anything. I'm sure he'll reach well, out on his own. Yeah, I mean, but the thing is, though, that I mean, he d he did say when we met, met with him, uh, he'd get back to us on, on the next meeting in two weeks, and that hasn't happened. He got all, all into the other stuff. Um, that's just just what I'm what I'm saying. Like, I just want to make sure that he's not. Um, thinking that all the other stuff can come before this, before the CD go home stuff, because, I mean, it can't. According to, I mean... If, I don't think he has... thinks that. I don't think he thinks that. I think we gave a very... We gave him a proposal of what we wanted to do, and he's looking at it. Yeah. Yeah. And he, I think he's just trying to integrate into his own mm -hmm. bioregional work. And like, see how it, you guys think together and learn together, and you know you, they got a network. And I think that maybe there will be some things like consulting for you, or some collaboration. But it needs to be integrated and negotiated into the critical path, and we can do that when the time comes. Maybe we just take this one week at a time, right? Because we like, I don't. All, all of our plates are very full just from this meeting in terms of getting to Friday. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. we'll have to, we'll have more information on Friday and then, you know, then you're into the week of finishing the house. And, you know, so this is such a huge thing that, that we're doing that it makes sense to me to approach this sort of one week at a time and, and refine as we go. And on that note, I'm running out of time here. Uh, if there's anything else critical you guys want yeah. to cover. No, that's it. But just, so so are we on the same page that if we put the build on October 10, is there, what's the likelihood that we can actually do it at that time? I mean, are we still okay or that's again going to get pushed? How do we feel about it? Do we feel pretty? I mean, that's <laughs> <laughs> occurred that time or we're going to find oh man no we ain't ready it, it, my, my view is that my view is that the probability of success is constantly going up the more organized <laughs> we get you're, you're you're further you're further along today than when we started this conversation it was a complete pipe dream oh man that's the best euphemism I've heard <laughs>
I, mean, I, I please explain to me why it's so funny. Like I don't I don't know why it's a euphemism. Like well, you're we're 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 tackling some of the like well, that doesn't answer questions. anything. <laughs> that doesn't that's not an answer. We're I mean to say that it, it doesn't <laughs> matter. Like well, my 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 point is like whether or not we actually build on the tenth is irrelevant. The what matters is that we're or like organizing and and planning around an anchor point like the plan doesn't have to be perfect what has to be perfect is our ability to adapt from a common reference point and see the same yeah. picture okay and right. so like if it's november 10th instead of october 10th that's still success we're not going to get to the point where we can answer all of these unknowns until we establish an anchor point and like start doing it yeah <clears throat> All right. All right. <laughs> All right. I'm, All right. Fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Have a great night, guys. All right. I believe October 10th. Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. All right, man. All right. Thanks, guys. Later. Bye.